Let's quickly look at the classifications of Hynia. And in this classification of Hynia, we'll mostly just deal with pictures, all right? I won't talk in depth on any of the classification because what well, I have lectures on each one of them. Like I have lectures on internal and external hynia. I have lectures on classification of hynia based on anatomical locations and all the stuff. Okay. So we'll just deal with their pictures, try to explain from the pictures. And if you need single lectures on any of the classifications, just let me know, right? So first of all, let's define what is an hynia. Uh, we said that the hynia usually happens in your abdomen or groin, okay? And this is when one of your organs pushes through the muscles or tissues that were actually what? Holding it back. Do you understand? So it may look like an old bolt that comes and goes. And that's the classification of what hynia based on reducibility or irreducibility, okay? Some hyenas can come and go, some are just there, like, all right? May also cause symptoms or may not cause symptoms such as discomfort or pain. That's why most of the times you come across patients in the, the clinic that have had hyenas for a very long time, okay? And they are only coming when the thing started showing up, symptoms and all that, okay? So that's just the differences between the two concepts. All right, so talking about the classification. You could have hyenas as external or internal. Now you see here, external hyena just simply means what? Hyena that is on the outside. Internal hyena means what? All right. Yeah. The organs are pushing the muscles containing them. All right. But it has not, the organ itself has not come out. The muscles could actually bulge. But the organ is not out yet. Okay, that's an internal hyena. All right. So a classification of an, a, a hyena based on anatomical uh, regions. That's basically what we have hyena in the epigastric region. That's the epigastric hyena. Hyena through the umbilical region. Umbilical hyena. If you have yeah, incisional hyena too, not really by location. All right. This one is just basically by course. Then if you have hynia in the femoral triangle, that's a femoral hynia. If you have hynia in the inguinal region, that's the inguinal hynia. Then if you have a hynia so away, that's a lateral hynia. All right, so that's basis of based on what uh, location. Then based on features, on that based on features, we have hynias that could be reducible or irreducible. When we saw one patient with hynia in the uh, in the in the clinic. Our coordinator actually what navigated and pushed back this hyena, all right? So hyenas that will go back and come. That's hyenas that will say that are reducible. All right? Reducible now means where they can go back and come back. Then irreducible ones are the ones that they are just there permanently. Okay. And strangulated and unstrangulated. Um, strangulated just simply means where there's a twisting. Right, so this twisting is leading to what an occlusion of blood. All right, so hyena can lead to occlusion of blood that's strangulated, or no occlusion of blood that's unstrangulated. All right, then obstruction or non obstruction hyena. This one will say that what this type of hyena, if it is obstruction type, uh, you say that what the abdominal content are twisting in a way that what most of the intestines in a way that what food is not flowing again right and this can lead to things like vomiting constipation and just name them all right all the symptoms of large bowel obstruction or small bowel obstructions that you guys already know all right so that's it about the classification of hyena just an overview all right i have videos on each one of them coming through